hemisecting molar teeth. You don't see that very much anymore. I rarely do that. But again, there are times when it's indicated this is an elderly patient. She's about 90 years old. You can, she's got xerostomia, very prone to decay, in poor health, and limited vertical bone. Remember, we ought to have 10 millimeters of vertical bone from the inferior alveolar nerve to the alveolar crest so that we can place an eight millimeter implant. And we didn't have that. So we wanted that tooth for chewing efficiency. So we've hemisected the mesial root and then bone grafted with the membrane the distal socket after extracting this decayed root. Now you'll see I want this to look like a bicuspid. That, I don't want a little ledge right here. See how I've rounded that or smoothed that off. So after performing endodontics just on the two mesial roots, placing a composite buildup, I'm going to section this tooth from facial to lingual. And this is just a coarse barrel diamond, lots of water, light touch, and be sure you cut all the way through the frication. And I like to use a rubber dam for this. Just elevating that root. Now it's probably going to break off. The coronal half is probably going to fracture because of all the decay. And we'll have to go back and remove. See, I'm cutting facial lingually. And then I'm, with this round burr, I'm making a little cut on the distal of that distal root so I have a purchase point for my elevator. See, since that root is broken off flush with the alveolar crest. Now pay attention to this part. You don't have a purchase point for an elevator, so I want to move that to that root mesial and distal. I don't want to take it out to the facial because I'll lose the facial bone or the buccal bone plate. So cut just a little trench in the distal of that fractured root and then you can place an elevator in there and gently move it forward or mesially and then place an elevator in this section area and move it distally. And then I'm able to get my extraction forceps and remove the root straight up and down. Then I'm going to cure at the socket and be sure that I've smoothed the distal of the mesial roots so that there's no ledge in the apical part of the crown of this tooth, the remaining crown of the tooth. And this is just a fine, large chamfer diamond. High speed, lots of water. Round all the edges. Now I'm cutting a distal wedge, and then you want to undermine the flap on the lingual and the, the facial just a bit so you can place your membrane under the flaps. If you just place a membrane flat on top of the bone graft, it's hard to suture. You tend to lift that membrane up as you're suturing. So reflect just a little bit a couple of millimeters on the lingual and the facial so that, that flat, there's a reflection and a place to tuck that membrane in so it adheres well to the socket and covers the bone graft material well. This is Maxius cortical mineralized demineralized bone. I really like the composition of this bone graft. I'm going to plug it with a plugger, just an amalgam plugger. Then this is Dynamatrix. Uh, resorbable membrane, collagen membrane. We're going to use that to cover the bone graft. I want to tuck it under the lingual flap and the facial flap. Then I'm going to suture it with 3-0 gut suture. Then I'll let that heal for three or four months and then come back and prep the tooth for a crown. That's the Dental Minute.